Welcome back to From Breaker, The Witcher Tales. So there's uh, the wood over there. I'm gonna send some scouts ahead. Just, you know. Huh. I guess I found most of the secrets. Yeah, or all of them. Meave's ears caught the sound of a ruckus coming from the camp. Feet! Inglet! A pox upon you all! It was her quartermaster hurling oaths at the peasants she had freed from the Nilfgaardian slave convoy. A few had stolen supplies under the cover of darkness and escaped into the woods. Terror and dread gripped the other freed prisoners. Meave mulled over what to do with them, and Reynard, as always, offered some advice. Tis high time they went off on their own, Your Grace. They are too great a hindrance. They slow our march, divert our soldiers from more important tasks. And now this. Gascon was listening to their conversation. Meave shot him a questioning look. I opposed taking them in. So, for consistency, I now oppose forcing them to leave. We made their miserable lives our responsibility, did we not? Well then, that is a burden we cannot simply shrug off. Let us not mince words. We cast off these peasants now, they shall die. Meave said in the end. Let them stay. But I want them watched. They cause any more trouble, military justice they shall face. Understood? The freed prisoners sighed with relief. The infantrymen assigned to watch over them, however, grumbled their disapproval of the Queen's decision. It is an army, not a shelter, they said. Meave's ears surely caught the complaint. But the Queen had never let the opinions of others guide her in such matters, trusting only her own judgment. Surely. Well. They certainly don't like that. What's this? Not liking the looks of this, Gascon said, furrowing his brow. Meave followed his gaze. Before them, beside the road, stood a hut with a scorched thatch roof. Why? Huts abandoned, yet dried fruit and mushrooms hang from the eaves. Famine raging all around and no one's been tempted. I'd send a scout if I were you. The Queen did as Gascon suggested and sent three infantrymen to reconnoiter. They entered the hut and found only silence that was soon broken by a blood-curdling growl. The soldiers ran out at full speed, tripping over their own legs. Meave drew her sword, convinced a horde of neckers or ghouls would soon attack. But her fears proved unfounded. Instead of monsters, out of the hut came a shaggy dog, a torn scrap of fabric clutched in its teeth. Uh, milady! One of the soldiers began, his face red with embarrassment, and his hands covering a hole in his breeches. Uh, was dark as a well inside, uh, and that hound. It, it jumped out at us all of a sudden, biting it and snapping. <laughs> Bad boy, Gascon said with a smile, then pulled a hunk of dried sausage from his bag. Bought by this generous offering, the dog calmed down at once. Further examination showed the dog was the hut's only resident. Like many others in Edern, its owners had disappeared without a trace. Their loyal mutt still guarded the premises, waiting for his master's return. Let's take him with us, Gascon said. Otherwise, he'll die here, of his own hunger or someone else's. A watchful sentry like this could prove useful in our camp, said the Queen. Fine, he can join, but he shall need a name. How about Reynard? proposed Gascon, a cheeky grin smeared across his face. That way, he'll come when you call. Sit on command and always be a heel. <clears throat> uh, always heel, that is. Watch your words, said Reynard, hand tightly gripping the hilt of his sword. Or you'll learn I'm not at all as tame as you believe. Enough, both of you. That's an order. As for you... The Queen took a good look at the dog, who still had a scrap of fabric in his teeth. Since it seems you have a taste for the cloth of the nether regions, I dub you... Knickers. Will that do? The dog wagged its tail vigorously, as if thoroughly pleased with its new name. Meave's company marched off, a furry new recruit richer. Knickers. <laughs> I guess. 
I actually have a dog. All right. It is amusing, really. I'm curious how many uh, chests I found so far. Let me go. Oh, I can talk with him. Well, I guess I should. Your Majesty, I've been meaning to thank you for allowing me to join your ranks. Certainly, Xavier. I welcome all foes of Nilfgaard to march beneath my banner. But what did the field surgeon say? Have you not resumed work too soon? I've strength enough to wield a hammer. Though my scars still burn, and fiercely so. My lady, I've seen folk turn and frown at the very sight of me. If my appearance disgusts you, I can... Nonsense. The Nilf Guardians, not you, should be ashamed. You've no reason to hide, no reason to cower. Thank you, my lady. It means a great deal to hear that. You've long served in King Demoven's army, haven't you? Yes, Your Grace. Why enlist at all? What prompted you to do so? Hmm. The King needed engineers. I answered the call. Not terribly talkative, are you? I can build any bridge, any ballista, but to talk, well, it hurts to talk. I see. Well, do not worry. I prefer deeds to words, in myself and others. Other matters await my attention. We shall speak later. As you wish, my li Yes? This Eldane. Could you tell me about him? He should hang. I'd hope to hear advice that will be useful to us in battle. Hmm. First of all, you can't rightly trust the bastard. He doesn't respect our laws, doesn't share our morals. The King once dispatched an envoy to Eldane, despite my advice to the contrary. Found the envoy the next day, eyes gouged out, shaft of his white flag jammed down his throat. So, diplomacy is clearly not the wisest course. But what of battle? What tactics does he employ? Like all elves, he's a worm, avoids open confrontation, sets ambushes, attacks from the shadows, from midst the trees. It would be best to burn this whole forest to the ground, deprive him and his folk of cover, any place to hide. Sounds rather drastic, like tossing the babe out with the bath. Believe me, they'd not hesitate to do the same to us, not for a moment. Rayla, how are you holding up? Not certain I understand what you mean. <laughs> all Edurn is aflame. Nilfgaard's banners fly over its cities. Don't tell me you're not troubled. Of course I'm troubled. I stationed at Rosberg for five years. Knew all on the crew there by name. But that's war. That's its nature. No sense bemoaning it. I see. Just know if ever you wish to talk. I won't. But I do appreciate your concern, ma'am. I must go. <laughs> this tiny little dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this tiny little dog caused such a commotion. I will use it. When you play a gold card, summon knickers from your deck. This unit may raid your hand for yummy. <laughs> oh, I was laughing so fucking hard at the notion. Oh, dear. Okay. There we go. I shall use him. Uh, all right. Knickers is his name. Still need a thousand coins. Eldane, Eldane. That name rings familiar somehow. I have more wood than I have. Well, not really. But, in a sense, I need more gold than I need wood at this point. Another battle. In order to evade Nilfgaardian patrols, me veered from the main road. This detour, however, presented other dangers. The lord lost her way riding through a mist-draped forest. And eliminate the ancient foglet. Do not let me die. Uh, okay. What's the catch? Irving Sapper deployed 
damage unit by two if it was destroyed. Repeat the ability. To the card on the right. Hmm. No ability. I bit the white of an eye from half a league away. Stop your yapping and start digging. Okay, this is gonna get bad. No, I'd say I lost. <laughs> Yeah, I shouldn't have used the slinger there. Okay then. Give one charge to the card on the right. Ever have a storm knock out one of your teeth? Be a right good levy, big and beautiful. I smell a leak. Already, are we? Alright, the fog let us dead. Way closer than I would have liked. Enche, how very nice of them. And people wonder why the the Squirtle are despised. Neve and her companions neared the Moulderwood, a dense ancient forest of trees whose tangled branches had witnessed the conjunction of the spheres. It was not until King Vidimont's day that a road was finally carved through the primeval thicket, significantly shortening the journey from Rosberg to Aldersburg. Even when peace reigns, danger rules this road, Rayla said. Now, now no one dares travel it. At the edge of the wood by the road stood an enormous willow. Its branches swept down to cover its trunk, looking for all the world like long tresses shrouding a woman's face. Meave had an ill premonition. She did not like the sickly sweet aroma wafting from this tree, nor the metallic buzzing of insect wings. She sent a scout to investigate. He drew aside the drooping branches 
and stumbled back. There were men bound to the tree, covered in sap oozing from gashes in its trunk. Its heavy scent had attracted swarms of insects, flies, wasps, bees and beetles. They seethed over the bound men, crawling in and out of their ears and nostrils. Eldane welcomes us to his wood. Ray Meave stepped towards the tree and saw the men stuck to it were all still alive. Those the elves had caught recently writhed and howled for rescue. Those hanging longer merely followed the queen with half-crazed, bloodshot eyes. Well? Are you to stand there all day? Meave screamed to her dumbstruck Lyrians. Free them! At once! Her soldiers needed no more prompting and set about sawing at the ropes with their blades. As soon as they had freed the first captive, before even a word of thanks could be uttered, a flaming streak soared through the air and stuck in the tree. The oozing resin burst into flames, engulfing the prisoners as well as the soldiers who had come to their aid. Elder speech battle cries rang out from the woods as elven warriors launched their attack. Nilkaipsia! It's a trap! cried Reynard. Defend the Queen! Totally. The Lurians fought in a veritable inferno, choking and drowning in a sea of crimson smoke, surrounded by the horrific screams of men whose skin had begun to melt and warp. The ambushing elves appeared as specters, black paint streaked across their faces, eyes smoldering with their virulent hatred for mankind. You little shit. Then we fight. Keep your heads in the fight! They'll seek to blind us with shock and awe! Left, right, left, right. Nay, do one they came est. This harvest will be reaping black clad heads. There's been a mistake. I'm no mage. Oh, I'm such an idiot. <laughs> that was my bad. None shall tread on us. Fine then. Kill them! Kill them all! Go, hop, hop. Okay. Now we will see who is weak. Knickers. Spirits willing and how the these damn boots are killing me. Ha. Ours is not to reason why. Her Majesty is exceptional. <laughs> Everything all right?
Oh, Lyrian lummoxes. Have strength, my love. Yeah. You must sweat like a swine in that jacket. Death to old one! So be it then. This can work. You don't need him in your hand though. Keep your heads in the fight! They'll seek to blind us with shock and awe! Totally. Alright. I deploying the scythe. Kill them! Kill them all! The chase is on! Probably gonna lose the straight cavalry. I shall not fail! Oh. None shall tread on us. Yeah. Bigger they are, easier they are to target. Yeah. Ah, should have listened to me, old lady. Death awaits us all. Snickers. The storm is coming. Let's enjoy the weather while we still can. Watch your heads! <laughs> Everything all right? All right, last card. This is Elven Land, Dwan, upon which your kind. Don't let them regroup. Finish off the wounded. Yeah. The battle done, Meave surveyed the carnage, her breath still ragged. The thick stench of blood, sap, and ash she sucked in made her stomach churn and head swoon. The Scoia'tael. 
I'd heard of their cruelty, but... The Queen said, sheathing her sword. But I... Never have I countenanced a thing like this. Black Rayla, who had just extracted her blade from between an elven gorilla's ribs, smiled darkly. Worst is yet to come, my lady. The Queen regrouped her forces and marched into the Moulderwood. The Lyrians sang none of their usual marching songs. Instead, they walked in silence, eyes darting constantly to their flanks. Hear that? Nightingales. Unmindful of war, they sing on. Those are no birds, my lady. Just Scoitel scouts use animal cries to communicate. Tell the men to hold to the road, my lady. Anyone wanders in the trees, they don't come out. All right, then. All right, so 200 over there. It's about having the father, I suppose. Alright, not enough. Okay, so, four Riv Rivian pikemen. I mean, you need good numbers of these guys to really make them useful. I'd reckon. Although, it would also be an idea to go for as few cards as possible. Having a big deck is not necessarily the wisest moves. Alright, my objective is over there. That doesn't mean I won't do, do anything that's required over here, though. What the place? I'll first go west. Well, I'm glad they are not underestimating Meave's force. A battle. With elves, probably. When tossed. All right then. No, I do not need the dog. Stray's cavalry. All right, finish redrawing. Nay, hey. Duanve came last. Mm-hmm. My spirit's willing and how, but these damn boots are killing me. Let's see what he's gonna... Any 
anything else? I could destroy them obviously with Meave, but or one of them with me, but I want to destroy both of them with me. Slaughter them to a man. Yeah. If I deploy this. All right, straight as cavalry. I was hoping you'd say that. There's a time to reap, a time to sow. Three, four, five, six. None shall tread on us! Ever have a storm knock out one of your teeth? Now we will see who is weak! Indeed. Ours is not to reason why. Hey, how did he get boosted You'll by so much? Your mom ever squirted you out. <laughs> Either way, Gaston. <laughs> Wait, you're serious? Wow. Nickers is bloody powerful, clearly. I'll feed you to the crows. I fear not, for faith guides me. Yes. This is Elven Land, Dwan, upon which your kind dies. <sighs> no, I think you are gonna die right now. Right, I am here. There's a puzzle over here. Chest over on this side. Let's see what this puzzle is about. The Molderwood. Shrine of Militale. There is the power of all enemy archers to one. Do not let me die. Powerful elf, elven rogue.
One boat's all I need. Give me a target. Abalista, your command. I'm a war servant. Lyria! As you wish, my lady. Ballista, your command. I'm a war servant. <sighs> Doubt I'll ever pay off these school loans. One boat all I need. Give me a target. All right, that was that worked. Alright, the to get there I need to go up and then west. More Scoyatel, I guess. And yeah, not this time. Oh, tell. Nay, do one they came est. Coin or sod off. <laughs> My spirit's willing and how, but these damn boots are killing me. There's a time to reap, a time to sow, and a time to die. I shall not fail! Ours is not to reason why. None shall tread on us! Now we 
will see who is weak. Bigger they are, easier they are to target. Well, I should probably just keep moving this card, People right? The man card. Thing about slings, they hide well. Blood and neck ends. Similian Vat. Hmm. As ordered. Yeah, I'm not going to win this one. Try again then. Maybe get rid of the strays. Pays late again. Nay, do one they came est. The chase is on. Special prize, just for you, love. My spirit's willing and how the... These damn boots are killing me. All right, that's going to boost them. Well, the annoyance, really. Hmm. No. No. Nothing personal, I assure you. The last ace up my sleeve, so to speak. Now we will see who is weak. I shall not fail. Bigger they are, easier they are to target. Ryan!
All right, four cards. Yove! All right, I need to kill that card. Thing about slings, they hide well. The storm is coming. Let's enjoy the weather while we still can. The night should help. Our codex commands it. Everything all right? The last card. Swords I smile at. Weapons laugh to scorn. Victory. All right. Son of a... What's up with GOG? Well, that's just how things go, right? A map. On the edge of the Moulderwood, there stood a small village, Crumhorn. The hamlet was surrounded by a high palisade, while the villagers carried makeshift weapons, flails, axes, and nail-studded planks. Life as the Scoyatel's neighbors was clearly not easy. While her men rested, Meave approached two of the villagers. They lowered their heads in respect and fidgeted nervously with their shirt hems. My lady, reckon you ought to know? Elves meeting traders in the woods at night. Buy swords, herbs. Rayla, who had overheard the conversation, twisted her mouth in a hateful scowl. Hawkers stink worse than vermin. Willing to help murderers for coin. Please, milady. We must find them and punish them. You, talk. Where do these meetings take place? The peasants looked at each other. One scratched his head, the other towed the sand. Finally, 
One of them blurted out, Could tell you, my lady, yes, but uh, only for gold. I see I'm dealing with shrewd men of trade. Fine. Your fee. Meave took a few coins from her pouch and tossed them on the ground. The peasants dropped on all fours and started snatching the coins from the grass, ignoring the contemptuous gaze of the Queen's soldiers. Them orcas wheel them goods to the old fishing hut north of here. Skyatel come a-crawling from the woods, the first crow of the cockerel. The Queen told her men to prepare to fight the Skyatel and their abettors. Black Rayla sat on a fallen trunk and sharpened her sword. The grinding of stone on blade sounded a grim promise. We got the gold. Them elves will get a beating. Now that's what I call good custom. When two dogs fight, when two dogs fight, a third's sure to get the bone. As in, you're gonna get rich after the fight that we're about to engage in. Let's see. The river? Over there, then. Oh, I, I see where, yeah. I see where I need to go for the treasure. Huntsman's away from hearth and home. Watch out for the Acromantula. Mighty fine pumpkin harvest this year. Huntsman's away from hearth and home. Well, I'm not going to take it because I need to restart GOG for some reason and I don't want to lose this opportunity. So, Costine signing out.